in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with my vlog and channel update for April 2023. The the months tick past quite fast. Um, very busy month, also my birthday month as well, so we have a few birthday pickups here, um, plus other things. Um, so I'll start off with a bit of a random one. I really like Blake Seven, um, and this person has published a season one guide. He's self published on Amazon. Um, I don't mind his writing, um, but he does need to improve his presentation. But other than that, it's it's not a bad book. <clears throat> he just could have put some um, work on the layout. Hopefully, he'll improve it <coughs> for the um, if he does guides for seasons three to four at some stage. But other than that, I enjoyed his writing um, and um, and obviously you know revisiting the episodes from season one on Blake Seven. So not a bad book, not very expensive. I'll put that up there if you want the um, ISBN number. So that was just a, an odd little pickup, just because I like Blake Seven. Um, now I also um, I have a local bookstore um, that's actually quite good, and they post on a Facebook group, uh, "Who's interested in this book?" And you say, "Oh yes, I'd like one of those." And then you go and check after a while because you've forgotten what you think. And I actually had four books aside for me. And I haven't. I've actually only mostly read one of them, and the other three I still have to go because I picked these up fairly late in the month. Um, so I have a book here called Aurora um, by David Coep. So he's the guy that um, he's actually a script writer, and this is his own, only his second novel. So this is when a solar storm hits the Earth and the lights go out and things like that. So it's like a post-apocalyptic thing. So I thought I'd show these books because uh, they're interesting. So obviously haven't started reading that one yet, but looking forward to it. Um, and this one sounded interesting. Um, uh, I believe a newer author, uh, Infinity D Gate, M.R. Carey. Um, I haven't read any of their other books, um, but it's um, you know you can't keep reading the old authors all the time. You need to give them a go. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. Quite a big tome too. So um, we'll see how we go with that one. Now this is the book that I have mostly read. Um, <clears throat> also used to play Dungeons and Dragons back in the day, still Dungeons and Dragons fan. So this is called Appendix N. So in the original version of Dungeons and Dragons there was an Appendix N where they listed all of the authors and stories um, that inspired the uh, what they put into Dungeons and Dragons. <clears throat> now it doesn't have all of those stories in there but they've done a very nice selection from um, uh, classic authors. Um, you know, including Robert E. Howard, who did um, uh, Conan. There's a Conan story in there. Michael Moorcock with his um, Elden, I think it's Elden, um, uh, series, which I read a bit back in the day. There's a few in H.P. Lovecraft and everything like that. So I'm, I'm most of the way through that one and really enjoying those as short stories. And probably the one that I'll read next, another book of short stories, because um, I'm actually, <clears throat> I really like Mars stuff and always like books on Mars. So the Book of Mars. Um, so it's a whole lot of short stories by various authors about Mars colonizing uh, and all sorts of events. Let's try and get up the table of contents for you guys. But um, yeah, I'll probably read this one next. Um, it's got. Uh, I mean, who knew that C.S. Lewis did a um, short story on Mars, Out of the Silent Planet? Um, is I'm just trying to find other, other authors Rod, Roger Zelensky a rose for Ecclesiastes that he wrote in 1969 and there's another page there so it's a big book lots and lots of <coughs> into categories like observations of Mars exploring Mars and um, and it goes on fears of Mars, life on Mars, colonising Mars 
So there's The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury, Bradbury is in there as well. And some ones by Arthur C. Clarke. So lots of interesting short stories on Mars. Um, <clears throat> so they're the books that I picked up. So next was my birthday. And my, um, <clears throat> my daughters know me very well. And they got together. So uh, last time my daughters got together, they found me... Um, the Saturn V rocket, Lego rocket, um, <clears throat> which is very hard to come by, and they managed to get almost the last one in stock. Well, they found another one in the set that was released at the same time. They found me the Lunar Lander. So, haven't put it, my birthday's fairly late in the month, by the way, <clears throat> haven't opened it or put it, started to put it together yet, but very much excited to start putting that together. Um, and we'll definitely enjoy it as a build. Um, and my lovely wife um, got me uh, Commander, is it Commander Rex, yes, Captain Rex, another one of the helmets. Um, so I've got little, this will be my fourth one of these. These are actually quite nice builds because they're quite small, but they've got a lot of pieces in them, and they're, it's actually amazing how they come together. Um, and she also got me Dead Space for the PlayStation 5. Um, now I have played uh, Dead Space and Dead Space 2 on the PlayStation 3. Um, I've never actually played the third one. Um, but I really, really enjoyed those. And I know they're hard, and but I haven't played them for such a long time. So I've actually been playing this one pretty much straight away. Um, and um, and uh, really enjoying it so far. Uh, I have forgotten how hard it is though, uh, but the special effects are really good here and we had a really good, I was playing it and um, wife and the daughter that is still at home with us uh, came in while I was playing it and I said, oh, I'll put it down and put it on TV. They said, no, you can keep playing it. So they were sitting there watching me play this and they got a genuine jump out of their skin jump scare, which was absolutely awesome, I think. <laughs> um, so it, the game has lots of atmosphere um, but is it? It's not not easy. You, um, um, but um, I'm I'm getting better out of it. Um, I'm only up to the uh, what the boss at the end of um, I think it's stage two. So I haven't got very far, but thoroughly enjoying it. So really, really appreciate getting that for my birthday. And also, while we're out on my birthday, I um, went to a little town nearby called Richmond. Um, had a lovely burger. Pop a shot up there of the burger, and then there was a game store there. So my wife said, "Well, you know, you can get something else." So I got this Alien Fate of the Nostromo board game, um, and you can play it single player as well. So I have a, it's a bit of a um, you know survive and finish the mission type game. Obviously, uh, most of the missions are to uh, avoid not getting killed by the alien, um, and big Alien fan, so really looking forward to playing this one. Um, I have opened it already, um, and actually, I'll just show you a real quick look inside. So when you first open the box, you get that, which I think is very, very cool. I won't show you the rest, because I may, I'm actually, because I, I do have a few board games, I was thinking of doing just a, a proper unboxing video. So I haven't popped any of the things out, so when I do that, I'll record it, if it looks all right, I might up, and if people express their interest, I might upload it as well. Um, so you know, th th they were mostly my um, my birthday pickups. Um, oh, and also while we're at Richmond, my daughter got herself a um, a Doctor Who TARDIS police box. I'll show that as well if I remember in the editing. Now another thing I got during the month, which you should just be able to see in here, I got a new 3D printer. Um, now it's not super new, so uh, the reason why I got this because well, it's fully enclosed. It's a lot newer than my other 3D printer, which I pretty much assembled myself, and it, it works, but it's not that reliable. That was very hard to get level. Uh, this one is self-leveling. It has a fully, you know, contained environment for the printing, so that it can control its temperature. It also keeps the filament stored away, so it doesn't get too much air. And I've had some really wonderful prints on it so far, which I've forgotten to pick up. Um, and I've been, uh, and I'll cover this more in the homebrew section, I've been uh, working on uh, cartridge cases for the original Spectre video. 
So this is actually an early print. Um, the later ones are, are much better than this, but I'll let you read them out for demonstration. This is another design that's more like the original cartridge and it has clips on the side. Um, but the PCBs I've got printed fit in this one with the screws far better. Um, this is an initial prototype I did that doesn't actually come in half. Um, what I'll do is I'll insert pictures of the proper ones I've printed up and they've come out really nice. Um, I don't have, well I may have some more of this translucent red left, I've got to change. Unfortunately the new printer only takes 500 gram spools. I have lots of one uh, kilogram spools but they're too fat to go in so I actually need some more empty spools and you know to um, <clears throat> put the filament on myself to put into the printer but I'll work that out uh, at some stage. But it's working quite well, I can print shells, I can print like four at once. Um, for, for the numbers of titles that I'll sell for the original Spectre video that's fine. If I do actually end up selling quite a few games for the original Spectre video, I can get good mates at PCB Way to <coughs> um, print up some, uh, send the design off and they'll print up a batch. You know, so maybe I can get 50 done a month or, so, or something like that. Uh, but I'll look at that when I get a little bit closer and I've got a little bit of homebrew update coming um, in a later part of th this video. We'll get to that. Um, <clears throat> now I also um, visited my mate Gary, um, local mate Gary, and I mention this in particular because he's spent the last X number of months, I don't know how long, so he, he, he managed to find a original Battlezone um, Battlezone Arcade and he's finished restoring it. He only has a couple of little things to do but he's got it working and it's the proper one that you actually um, put your head right up to and look into the visor to play. Um, he does have the uh, multi um, board for it so it plays Battlezone, Battlezone 2, I think Red Baron, Lunar Lander and a couple others. Um, he also has a really nice Indiana Jones um, pinball uh, in my excitement when I was first there, I thought I took pictures of it, but I didn't, so you'll have to believe me, he has a really nice, good condition Indiana Jones pinball, and he also has an Alien pinball, which is a really cool pinball by a different pinball company, <clears throat> and he let me out of game with that, so this is just, you know, stuff I've been up to this month. Um, and then, of course, a very big thing this month, we finally had the big candle was lit and SpaceX launched their first Starship on top of its booster. Uh, now, it didn't make orbit, uh, they had, uh, you know, uh, they were betting on themselves low chance and they've already, like the booster that flew, Booster 7, they've already um, changed a whole heap of things for the next booster. But it managed to um, get a fair way up, didn't explode on the pad, which is good caused a bit of pad damage which they're fixing and putting a plate in um, so it'll be interesting to see when they uh, when they do the next launch and how much smoother it goes apparently I was just watching a video earlier today they actually lost three engines right at the start so they actually launched with less engines um, and it's, you know, they decided to go ahead with it um, and as it the whole vehicle did well and um, the only things they've really got to improve for their next thing, other than you know their, their learnings, the general things, is they need a better um, abort system because the abort system didn't actually the, it, the rocket took far too long to destroy itself after they set that off, almost 40 seconds. Um, but they were amazed at the how um, strong the integrity of the rocket was, the very fact that it held together for 40 seconds after they initiated the um, the abort. Um, so yeah, I'm very much looking for. I've always been a big space nun. I've been look. I just showed you two Lego sets, um, well Lego sets that were space based. So it's, um, I suppose, not very surprising. All right, homebrew update. So I've been uh, focusing on getting my um, my games back and working on my uh, on the original Spectre video. So my chair just <laughs> collapsed. Um, and um, so I've gotten, I mean, I do have originals of my uh, my games for the Spectre video on tape. You can buy them on my store. And I've got more blank tapes too, so I can keep on producing these. Um, but that game with Media Swarm and Birds of Orion and uh, Munch Mania, which I haven't been able to restore the tape for, for, I do have the original source code. 
I have actually made a cartridge the same as what I made for the Coleco. So, um, well, it's probably about six years ago now. I got those three titles and I reprogrammed for the Coleco with a menu and released them on a cartridge. So I thought, well, that is probably a convenient way to, for people to experience them. Um, I have some cases. These are only like Master System Mega Drive cases, but the really good thing is that they're really light, they are strong, um, and which you know, it means they're not going to add much to the postage cost. Um, also, thinking ahead, this size here, uh, Mega Drive and Master System cartridges, are the same size as a cassette tape, which is the same size as a MSX cartridge. And for a spec video cartridge, It'll fit in there like that, and I just need to put some padding or probably up there so it won't move in the case. So they're good cases. Um, I did have universal game cases before, but they're really hard to get and actually quite expensive. Um, so this print of this cover, so I hope, I hope you like the design. I've still got to do some more work on the back. The back's not very impressive. Uh, the colours will be a lot brighter. This is just printed on normal painter on my colour laser printer here. I'll get them properly printed up and the, the colours should pop a lot more. Um, but I'll do some test prints. But this is what my spec video ones are going to look like. So I've made myself up a template. And you can see it there. Um, and the other title that I've got working on the original spec video is Cavern Fighter. Um, and I've done a box for that as well. So Cavern Fighter is all completely working on the original Spectre video. So both of these titles, I still am just tweaking the sound effects. Back in the day, <coughs> I really only put very rudimentary sound effects into them. I mean, Kevin Fighter, the original one, never had any sound effects. I never got to that part. Um, but I'm just in that final stage of just tweaking the sound effects so I like the sound of them. So I will show these games as, um, as I uh, waffle on about them here. Um, and I'll have to sound up a little bit, but I am working and improving on those sound effects. But that's it, running perfectly fine. Um, these are all running perfectly fine on the original Spectre video. It's just so nice to get them on a cartridge and being able to plug it into an original Spectre video for those out there that are interested. Once again, not expecting too many orders for the original Spectre video, but I know there's a few people out there that would really like to have those games as a cartridge and just have some new cartridges for the original Spectre video will be very exciting. And then once I've got those ones done, it'll be a very short step to convert them over to the MSX and release the MSX versions. Um, and also I'll be releasing them on uh, as physical cartridges and um, I've upgraded my web store um, and I'll be able to sell digital images for those who don't want a physical cartridge and just want to download the ROMs. And I'll be re-releasing some of my older titles in that form as well, for the ones that have, um, you know, sold out and you can't physically get the, um, the copies made anymore. And I'm not going to, uh, you know, reproduce any new physical copies for those older titles. Um, so that's for the ColecoVision and the um, NES. Um, and I'll put them on my web store as well for those that are after those titles. Um, also, still working on Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death for the NES. Um, John Gamester 81 has actually done another test run for me, uh, but I've been busy for about the last three weeks and haven't had a chance to go through. It is very, very close. We're down to really little uh, niggly gameplay things now. The game is perfectly playable all the way through from level 1 to 10, and there's an end screen and things like that. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, probably in about another two weeks I'll, I'll just should be able to get a couple of days to get really get into that. Um, I've also been writing the book programming games for the NES and I have just submitted chapter 11 chapters 1 to 5 uh, have just finished being peer-reviewed so that's out uh, I think it's about a dozen people um, reading and commenting on those chapters um, and chapters 6 to 11 will go to technical review and then um, uh, be finalised for the book. So there's only about 17 chapters in the book, so I'm getting a fair way through that now and enjoying the process. Um, now one final thing to round out this month's video, uh, only just this last weekend I went to another pin crawl event where uh, we went to two different locations in um, northern Tasmania. 
Um, we did get there a little late for the first location, so we're in a bit of a rush. <coughs> so excuse me if I don't have pictures of every single pitfall. I'll just do a quick uh, flick through of them of here. Lots and lots of pinballs um, um, and, and other machines as well. Once again, my pictures won't do it justice. Um, I did very poorly at the first house because we were very late. We only had about an hour to go and play um, the six competition games. Um, and uh, then we went to the second location. Another wonderful, wonderful line up of um, uh, pinballs. Now, I have been to both of these locations before. Um, if you look back in old uh, videos, uh, I think their lineups are almost the same. There's just a couple of new machines. Um, and um, one of the competition machines was a brand new one. I mean, the second house, he's got heaps of, um, you know, band-focused pinball machines, which I actually um, do quite like myself. Um, and I did go a lot better at the second site. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was good fun catching up with all those guys again and playing some pinballs. And I'm glad to see that my skills improved <laughs> once I got warmed up at the first one and played some more at the second one. Um, and we left there, um, uh, you know, past midnight, and we only drove to, uh, so I'm in Hobart, this was in Burnie and Devonport, which is over here on the triangle, and we went back to Launceston, which is up here, which I forgot to say, we picked up another friend from Launceston, um, who, by the way, has a really nice Space Invaders machine, once again, editing, I'll put that there, um, and, um, then drove home the next day so it was really good fun loving my pinball obviously i still don't have a physical pinball myself i would love to get one one day i have my virtual pinball my attack from mars uh, one day i'll clear out a bit of space and um uh, and uh, probably have to sell some things and get a, a proper pinball but that's no time soon um now i have done a couple of videos on arcades during the month um which, which I've already covered, but I'm really, really pleased with some of the things. So obviously when I went to Gary's, my mate Gary's house, that's when I got my Raiden, um, uh, Raiden board for the arcade, and it's sitting over there and there. I'll probably have a game after this. Um, and he also had an Aero Fighters 2 MVS cartridge, <coughs> which is a really good MVS game. Um, and there will probably be more arcade pickups as well in the near future. All right. I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful time playing both their retro and modern games. I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>